Well, John Hunt, good afternoon. And to you, Nick. Nice to welcome you to Windsor. Thames side, sun's out. What a beautiful night ahead. It certainly is looking like it will be. Um, an advert in the Harrow Observer for a trainee commentator with Ladbrokes. Yeah. And you've never looked back. Um, why did it appeal? Ah... Uh, well, look, as a, as a young as a young kid watching racing with my dad, I was always aware that I could, I could pick horses out. I, I was a quite a good identifier because dad wasn't, you know. So, one of our partnership needed to be able to pick them out. So, it, on a very fundamental, rudimental basis, I was able to. I knew I could. I, I knew I could do it. And then when that job advert appeared, I was I was in the police force. And my wife was in Harrow, hence the newspaper you referred to. She saw the advert and we were young and carefree and all the rest of it. And she said, she said, why don't you just give it a go? And, uh, and I just thought, yeah, why don't I just give it a go? Because and obviously, it was obviously a trainee post, so no great pressure. And work were brilliant because they said if it, if it didn't work out, you could come back. And so I thought, well, as someone who likes a gamble every now and then, that seemed a pretty <laughs> good gamble to take, didn't it, really? Played so. it to your hands. I yeah. Mean, yeah, you say you were a policeman at the time. You trained as a nurse. You were working yep. in a news agency. Was, was there any concern in your head, like, oh, this is another change of career path or no. anything like that? Different times, weren't they, really? Mm. I, I, was just, I was just busy being happy, you know. I enjoyed every single thing I did, you know, and just moved on, moved from job to job for a variety of different reasons. I mean, joining the... Joining the um, Met Police. I wanted to. I wanted to get back to London. That was the main thing. I was out in the countryside. That part of it. I liked the nursing, but that part of it didn't really suit me. So um, yeah, coming back to London was the big pull there. And oh, you've got to be a policeman for like forty hours a week. Oh well, okay. We'll we'll see how that goes. And to be honest, it was a great job for, great job for a, a young man. You know, it's. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. But yeah, this was an unexpected diversion. Took a chance, um, a small chance. Uh, they were. They were obviously not setting the bar too high in terms of expectations on ability. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just rolled along. And my first week was them Royal Ascot, sat down watching Royal Ascot, wow. getting paid for it. I'm thinking, well, this is all right. This will do. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, when you started to train and, and do it for the first time, mm. I mean, it's a job which, which requires an element of self-belief, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, what did you think of your ability? I, th I, thought, I, I, thought, I, I thought I had it in terms of um, the basics. Uh, but with that came a realization that I that I, I had to brush up on this stuff that I wasn't so hot on. Mm. Um, and was that information, or was that a, it? Was wasn't that so much information. It was about mechanics, putting things right. together, uh, breathing properly. It was about mm -hmm. acknowledging that a fourteen runner race over a mile at Goodwood was really you're talking about speaking for two minutes. Right. Yeah. Two two very different things, really. One and the same, but two very different things. So, uh, yeah, I had to work on that. That took me a little bit of time. But we were so lucky in, in terms of, uh, I say we, because I started at the same time as Richard Hoyles as well, ITV commentator. And um, the firm we worked for uh, after Labrooks, this is when we became mainstream commentators two or three years after that. Yeah. Um, they, they let us have basically a year in the field doing it as practi paid practice, really. And... Oh, that was, you, you just wouldn't get that now. That was mm. that was worth its weight in gold. That was a wonderful opportunity. Who were you listening to? Were there, were there voices out there that, that you liked or that anyone you were sort of wanting to emulate? I, I don't think so. Obviously, O'Sullivan, Peter O'Sullivan was the big name of uh, horse racing. You know, when I first started, um, uh, horse racing commentary was, was very much the sort of old gentleman's ex-military sort of club so there were a lot of very similar voices voices who I, I remember thinking uh, you know they can obviously do it mm. and some of them like Rawley Gilbert had a, a voice made of honey you know it was just delicious to listen to mm. but it was all pretty pretty similar yeah okay and it was uh, it was only really when the Australian Jim McGrath came in to this country and completely ripped up the rule book so far as horse racing commentary was concerned how would, how would you describe that what do you mean it was it was he 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 had a completely different rhythm to his work he introduced new phrases that had never been heard heard before uh he just he had he had an incredible pace to his work as well mm -hmm. a vibrancy that 
again, it, this sounds like a slight on those that went before. It's not. Yeah. It was just different. Yeah. And as a young man entering that world, it it gave you license to maybe try a few different things and not try and be Jim McGrath, but it just said Jim's Jim's presence made us all, I think, realise look, there's just there's not one way that of doing this and one way only. Yeah, and sort of punchier metaphors, that sort of thing. Are these the sort of things that can that were making you feel I can, I can do this a different way? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, Jim had a, that famous scraping paint line, you know, meaning racing right up against the the, the uh, near running rail and mm. stuff like that. You know, it's only a very simple thing, but you know, Lieutenant Brigadier, whoever, yeah. wouldn't have wouldn't have said that yeah, sort of thing. It's provocative, isn't it? It's it, yeah, it, 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 it takes you there. Yeah, definitely. Um, Jim's a marvellous commentator, a marvellous broadcaster. So many of the, so many of the Aussie racing commentators were and still are. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting. I think. I think over in Australia. I think. I mean, we we think over here we get a fair bit of stick if we get things wrong and stuff. <laughs> but over there, I think it's pretty a pretty thankless environment. Pretty savage, you, is it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Jim came with that with that those sort of scars if you like over to here and um oh my god it was it was fantastic a breath of fresh air yeah and uh, i mean i would describe it i don't know if you do if people do um as linear commentary because you've got the start point you're going straight through and you're hitting the end mm. um and and so it's a particular style that requires a range yeah you know certainly in in more explosive sport like football when a suddenly a goal could come yep. out of nowhere suddenly you're hitting top range but but you can see it coming in a horse race. I've actually been told sometimes in my rugby commentary that because I can speak quickly when needed to mm. I get a bit horse racy okay and and the producer giving me that note is no, is no, wanting is to it, get that across negatively and I'm going to say yeah that yeah. sounds that sounds a criticism yeah to me. Well, I don't it, like the way this is going yeah <laughs> <laughs> horses for courses as we might say yeah. um but but the it's right when it's horse racing and perhaps to be going and it's Saracens that they're coming around the corner they're going to get the chance to score the ball at the, you know it's called the try on the corner that kind of thing is it's is maybe not what someone wants to hear as a producer of a rugby show but it, it is obviously meat and drink to, to a, a racing commentator and, and how have you found that from the very beginning in terms of you know your range because you hit some brilliant high tenor notes when they're crossing the line and, and you, you have to be very in touch I imagine with your range and, and where you can go I think so. Yeah, I mean, an, an early example, going back to my f just about my first big race in April of 1993, it was the Scottish Grand National, i.e., going back to what we were talking about earlier, not just four and a half miles around air race course, mm. but ten minutes of solid broadcasting. Yeah. And the favourite horse called Run For Free planted himself right at the start and just for like eight, ten seconds, looked like he wasn't going to take part. Yeah. And this is my first big race and right and i <laughs> and i'm i'm pretty much through the roof within 20 seconds yeah okay and then of course where mm, are you going from how there? do you how do you bring this back now how do you and uh, there was a good finish as well and he he the same horse run for free eventually won the race which was mm. a an incredible story he beat uh, that day he beat um a horse called Mary Master who was ridden by a female jockey G Armitage which back then was potentially of, a yeah. huge story you know that she could win so there were all these threads yeah um and i was ha completely hanging on so um yeah i mean hitting highs at the right time but you see it's it's funny you should say about pace and stuff like people come up to me and say oh yeah well, you're a racing commentator go on do a bit do a bit like this <laughs> yeah and I'm thinking, well, like, there's, I don't, just, I'm looking hard, but there's no moving horses with yeah. jockeys on them anywhere near, you know. And um, they, I say, what you mean, like, blah, 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 blah. yeah, 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 do that, do that, do that, yeah. do that. And it's like, well, is our, is our job really just rapidly just gabble? Yeah, is yeah. It, is that what people think it is really? And of course, it's it's not, is it? It's not. No. I mean, we we got a we've got a, a really fine bunch of um, British commentators at the moment, and. None of them are gabblers. They're all they're all trying to convey excitement, but be accurate above and and uh, uh, anything else. Above well, it's them. it's it's not it's it's no good if it's not accurate, is it? And well, uh, you, no one would stand for it. Nick. No, you know you've got to be. No point in being a shouty screamer and then getting the wrong first three across the line. Yeah, you'd last a night, at, how, or maybe two or three races. But how would you describe your voice? Uh, I would say I'd say it's strong. Uh, I would, I would like. I always try and work on vocabulary. 
Okay. Um, thesaurus time. Because well, because sometimes in the heat of a moment, it's it's always it's always the easiest thing, isn't it, to mm. just rely on the same expressions. When Frankel was winning his 14 straight races, I did most of them for Five Live, and they did a montage when he retired. <laughs> And I just thinking, God, I'm saying the same thing every time. Oh, right. Effortless was the okay. word. And that summed him up yeah. perfectly. But You'd I rather could, it I didn't sum him up 14 <laughs> times. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> Looking back, I thought, can I re-speak one or two of these? Yeah. And maybe, maybe pick another word. So, yeah, to, I think I've got a strong voice. Uh, people say I'm excitable. Am I excitable? I, I, I'm excited by the sport. Well, that's if, what you need. If that makes me excitable, then that's fine. I, I, yeah, that can be both an accurate description and a little bit of a veiled insult, really, can't it? That, but uh, I've been in, I've been called dull and excitable on the on the same day, so wow. I'm not really too worried about I'm not really too worried about what people think or what people have to say. But mm. um, no, I think I think my voice is strong, and I think it's important in racing on big days as well. I think you need a voice that can that can sort of cut through. Yes. Crowd noise, especially. Yeah. So you need um, a little bit of nasal quality in there to actually. Get yeah, through. definitely, yeah. definitely. So, and I think I can do that. Yeah. Um, I've heard you do that. So yeah. yes, you can. Yeah, I think I can do that. I think I can do that. Do you warm the voice up? Do you do you see a big day coming ahead and, and think I need to just do something? We've got the clippity clop of hooves in the background to prove to you that we're outside at Windsor Racecourse. How lovely! Aren't they beautiful? He's just checking the form as well as they come past. <laughs> yeah. I do. Um, not all the time. Yeah. Uh, big days I do. Okay. I'll have uh, I'll have the last ten minutes of a drive to the Grand National or uh, Cheltenham, especially. I'll I'll have a bit of Paradise by the Dashboard Light, which is a song by Meatloaf. Oh yeah. You're so young. You were you wouldn't. I have, know Meatloaf. You wouldn't you have ever much. heard of that. But 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 the interesting thing about that song is it's got such a range. It's it's a it's it's got a male and female voice in it. Uh, Can you do them both? Well, that's the, I try to, <laughs> because the 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 female voice on the song is almost conversational, okay. but quite quick. Yeah, Meatloaf is um, Meatloaf's uh, Meatloaf's Meatloaf. He's got a hell of a belt on him. He has got a hell of a belt on him. Um, but interestingly enough, he 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 it, he start he starts off and builds to a crescendo in this particular song, and the crescendo is. A, a really significant crescendo as okay. well. So I think by the time I've got to the end of that song, I'm ready for the Grand National. So. <laughs> and if you're cracking through the end of that song, are you worried? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's a it's a really good vocal warm up. No, that's there's good. A bit of, there's a bit of everything in there. Yeah. No, yeah. that sounds nice. Have you had moments when it's let you down? Voice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've been usually when you've got colds and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and you've gone for a big line, and you can feel the tightening of your yeah. your throat. Yeah, I had to do Japanese top league at four in the morning with uh, effectively whooping cough, which was quite a challenge. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's all sorts of gadgets now, you cough buttons and stuff on your equipment where you can squeeze in a quick cough where no one notices. Yeah. Um, but sometimes when there's, you know, when there's only 100 yards left to go and you can feel the cough coming, you think, God, am I going to make it home in time? Yeah. So that, that can be a little bit scary, but but thankfully, you know. Coughs and colds. I think you, you can take if you've got a cold, you tailor yourself a little bit, don't you? To, yeah. to the task in hand, you yeah. you just bring it down uh, a, a fair little, few levels. Yeah, get a little just, closer on the mic. Just tr yeah, just yeah. try and manage. Just try and manage your your potential difficulties. Talk me through a, a commentary for a big one, a Cheltenham or a Grand National. I mean, obviously the, these days the, there will be sort of two or three or four voices on them, particularly yeah. for the bigger races. But, you know, in, in football rugby, there's a scene set because it's relatively episodic. You know, Sunday afternoon, last game of the weekend, Leicester Tigers at home playing to make top four, this kind of thing. Mm. Is there is there a top that you that you would write in terms of opening on a race? Um, that's a great question. Uh because I always take the view that, that the Grand National or, or one of the big races at the Cheltenham Festival are very much like a cup final. Mm. And I would like to think, I'm a bit of an old romantic, I'd like to think that a, a cup final, a World Cup final, will always sell itself yeah. no matter what the component parts of that particular final are. Yeah. And obviously when you get to Aintree or, or Cheltenham, there are layers of stories aren't there threads mm. um some more relevant some more important than others um 
but I, I, my favourites have always over the years been where the horses have been the, the headline makers. Yeah, the, the Corto stars and the and the Denmans. Uh, but would you write anything at all in, in those openings, or do you just once they said, and and at the start line, it's John Hunt. Yeah, no, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't pre-prepare anything very much. I would, I would prepare for the end. Um, okay, and that's not. Oh well, that's a little different then. Okay, yeah. And that's not the. That's not the. Uh, that's not the written word. That's not the um, written commentary. Yeah. Uh, verbatim. Yeah. It's. It, uh, you've got to be aware of the stories and, and how you can, quickly illustrate that right at the end of a race yeah okay and of course that's depending on how much time you've got if it's a very close finish there's not too much explanatory time is there but yeah. if if say Denman wins the second Hennessy by 12 lengths which he did then you've got time to contextualize the result completely tell you how many winners in a row exactly. that is has this ever been done before for example has yeah, it ever okay. been done before yeah like this drawing comparisons with the great Arkel you know and, and there you're into you're into major league mm. stories, then you know, and that's that. That's always been my ha- happiest time when there's been see the stars on the flat, Frankel on the flat. They were the same, yeah. Except I like jumping a bit more than flat racing, but um, uh, yeah. Whenever the horse is the story, that's always. I, I'm not. I'm not that bothered if if a horse. I, I quite like it if a horse has won the same race four times. That's all nice, isn't it? And stuff. Yeah. If. If only sixteen greys have ever won this race, I'm not that I'm not that fussed about that sort of yeah, okay. line. Do you know what I mean? The it, sort of long history of, of of facts and stats isn't relevant. But, yeah, but a personal story. Yeah, to yeah. one to one is yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, where do you how do you prep that? You know, uh, obviously in a rugby game these days, there's forty six names to go through. You must look at a race card and the number of runners and go right. I've got some work to do here. Is that is that as simple as it? Yeah, as well, how you, it works? you get a forty runner grand national always, and and of course. Um, I think you know, so, so long as you know, so long as victory for one of them isn't going to completely knock you sideways, you know, think, mm. Oh, mm, what do I say to that? Yeah. Oh, first time number twenty-eight's won a Grand National. Yeah. For well, by its very nature, s- an outsider s- is going to win every now and then. Yeah. And you've got to make sure you've got a line. I was I heard your twenty thirteen Grand National with Aurora's encore winning, and I think yeah. your line into the finish was virtually unmentioned. Yeah. And I didn't know if that was a mental signal of, oh, bugger, we haven't mentioned them, and they've come from nowhere. There might have been an element in that, really. Yeah. There, there might have been an element in that. But, but you know, it was it was true. Aurora's encore and Mon Moan before that at 100 to 1. You know, there were horses who were, in all the build-ups, in all the previews, given absolutely, in all the, you know, not an inch of... Not an inch of text in any of the papers or, mm. or online at all. So, and and with I remember Aurora's encore winning as well. Like, and it was just so quiet, mm. you know. And I, I like to if you're there. Yes, Aurora's encore's gone and won the national, unconsidered, virtually unconsidered. And this place right now would normally be going absolutely potty, but right now, you know. You could hear a Chris Packet Russell hundred yeah. yards away. Yeah. You know, just that sort of because yeah. on radio, you know, it's you've got to bring it across. I think so. Yeah. And if there's nothing so. to bring, yeah, but nothing can be a valuable thing to. Well, true. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. How do I bring you that? Yeah. Well, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, ID and things like that. That's that's down to colours. Yeah. Um, excuse my ignorance. I mean, obviously, all horses are different. Can you recognise well-known horses? Yeah. Some. Yeah. Some yeah. of them. Yeah. It was a famous. <laughs> there was a funny moment in the in the trade paper, the Racing Post, the other day. They there was a horse called Stradivarius who was going for a a one million pound bonus at York if he were to win, and they did a lovely shot of Stradivarius head on mm. with his jockey resplendent in the dark blue silks and yellow cap. Except they were the right owners, but that horse Stradivarius has got a big white head, oh. and this horse didn't. Oh. You know so. So for most people, they wouldn't notice. But most people wouldn't notice, but yeah, you tend to the 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 star horses. You do tend to take an interest in how they look. And yeah, stuff. okay. And and even on a quiet, mundane day at Hexham or wherever or Newton Abbott, you know, it's if if the jockey's colours are similar, mm. um, you do you do have to look at the horse and you're just, looking, aren't you? Then yeah, yeah, you just look look at you know the horse might have three white legs and the other one might they all might be brown, you know. Yeah. It's, it's important to make note of those, you know, just in case one of them falls at the worst possible point in the track. So far as your 
yeah. visibility is concerned. And, and if you see three white legs in the air and rather than three brown ones, you know, you know which one's which. Yeah, certainly. So you've got to give yourself as many opportunities to get to be right as possible. Yeah, and you've got the 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 caps and then the yeah. and the silks and everything else, mm. which you said you were you you felt you had an ability to do from from early on. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Yeah, I don't. It's just it just don't know whether it was because dad struggled with it or he gave me an opportunity to shine perhaps i don't Did you know ever find out whether he was colorblind i mean is this no he was never <laughs> too late to ask him now sadly but he was never colorblind that's for sure <laughs> um, yeah. two sides of the next coin in terms of question uh what's your proudest race call have you got one you'd love to do again i'd like to do some of the frankel ones again to be right. honest yeah okay we touched yeah. on that yeah yeah, I'll be completely honest. When Frankel won the 2000 Guineas, which was his amazing demolition job, he won by a long, long way. And that was, he had won his prep races, obviously, pleasingly. Mm. But Guineas Day, he was he was absolutely brilliant. And I wasn't really ready for that. Um, I'd been out the night before. Ah. And I remember thinking, yeah, this, let's just get this nice and smooth. Yeah. Tucked away. No problems. And... I can have an early night. Yeah. And of course he, he, he what he did was unreal mm. and I really wasn't ready for that. So I wouldn't mind a crack at that again. Mm. That would be in fact most of Frankel's I'd like to do again because they were too repetitive yeah. looking back. I mean I is that just the benefit of hindsight though? Because you yeah. you wouldn't have known at the start that he was gonna go and do what he did. No. So No. There's got a there's an element of natural yeah, the, the but then when when he gets to wins ten and eleven, yeah, okay, uh, at the highest level, you're thinking well, if you've not thought it before, then you're thinking now, this fella's a bit special, you know. Yeah, and uh, I think even even his last one, I, I was I was slightly disappointed with the way I handled that. Okay. So, which ones did you enjoy? Which ones do you look back on and go, yep, yeah, nailed it? All all the, we mentioned them before. All the all the great Gold Cups and Hennessy's involving and King George's with Quarto Star and Denman. Great. They were just such horses that that um, drew from you such an affection and mm. such admiration as well. Two horses who were very different, had very different styles. Okay. Corto Star was swift, nippy, very, very agile. So the commentary and, had to match. And charismatic, <laughs> yeah. Denman was just a grinder, a great big, they used to call him the tank. He was a great big thing, both in their own ways, equally exciting and mm. exhilarating to watch. So to do that, to do their big moments was, was fantastic. And and people often say, will always say to me now about, I don't think it was a particularly good commentary really, but when um, AP McCoy got his 4,000th winner in the saddle at Sleepy Toaster, yeah, because he came from a, quite a long way back in typical McCoy style, mm. I thought I... I thought I caught that one quite well, so yeah. that was a that was a good one. People often will say that, that that was a nice that was a nice afternoon's work. Yeah, I mean the BBC's allowed you to to cover several other sports as yeah. well: um, Olympics, Commonwealth, swimming, skeleton, bobsleigh, luge. Um, what are the big learnings there? I think I think there's lots to learn, isn't there? But I th I think half of the half of the lessons are all about acknowledging your limitations. Mm, okay. I mean, the there's an element in those where, you know, you could say, well, that's their still of a form which has a beginning and a middle and an end of a yeah. of a thing. So that's that's spot on to, to where you are. Yeah. But to use the bobsleigh example, they kindly asked me to do the Winter Olympics the autumn before. Yeah. I'd been, I'd been watching racing all of my 52 years. Yeah. Well, certainly 48 of them. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't really paid any attention to bobsleigh at all mm. before then. So... So you can't all of a sudden pretend you've got this great love of the sport, it's affinity, a, yeah. a great knowledge of the sport. That I've got, I could look. I, I, but then I guess you don't want to give yourself away as an interloper because you want to deliver a confident commentary. Yeah, but 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 I think I think what well, I did that winter, I watched all the World Cup events yeah. diligently. Yeah, made notes, got involved with a couple of people who who did know what they were talking about. Mm. And I, I, I just, as I just, long as I was factual, yeah. I thought that that was fine, you know? Uh, yeah. Lizzie Yarnold had had a difficult winter, was, was the big build-up to the Winter Olympics. Yeah. She really, really struggled, bar one event yeah. of, what, 11 or something like that. 
So she comes in now as defending Olympic champion in really shaky form. Yeah. That, for me, was, if I was getting that across to the once every four year listener, viewer, yeah. that was the main thing. That's all you need, isn't it? That yeah. was the main thing. Yeah. I, I've, got, I've got John Jackson, who, who happily now has got his bronze medal from Sochi round his neck. But he's the man who's got all the detail for you. Yeah. He'll be along in a second. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you've got to play to your strengths. And if you're, if you're lucky to be put, put as part of a team, I mean, who wants to, who wants to hear my opinion on bobsleigh when you've got an Olympic so, athlete next to you? So on that point, who wants to hear opinion on bobsleigh? Maybe not too many because they know that you're there to call the live part of it and someone else is going to be the expert. Let's let's just pop back to to the racing as the as the horses you know file past behind us. Yeah. Will you will you have an opinion there? Most of the time, yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, I'll have an opinion. I'll I'll. Yeah. Because it's not you know although you will have a reporter or someone down in a parade ring or speaking to the trainers, it's actually not a sport where you're generally alongside an expert no. while you're calling the race for no. them to have an immediate opinion like a pundit. So yeah. So I guess you have to sort of get across the action and an opinion on, on how expected or unexpected that is all at the same time. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, I, and I see enough racing to be able to do that really comfortably. I mean, that's not something that concerns me at all. I mean, I, was, I, was, I did a, a race at Worcester yesterday and the first race favourite, he looked, he, looked, uh, he looked uncooperative. Mm. This is pre-race. Yeah. He looked... He looked far from athletic. He looked stiff. He looked. He just. But enough about your producer. How was the <laughs> horse looking? <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was favourite for the race. Yeah. And I'm quite happy to say. Do you know what? I don't like his demeanour. This. Yeah. Horse. Okay. I just do not like his demeanour. I'd be surprised if he wins, but I. I would not be surprised if he had trouble jumping fences because he looks as though he's not, not athletic today. enough. Yeah. yeah. And hap- you know, for me, happily, I was right that he didn't run very well at all. Yeah. But I'm never ever. I always want to. If you've been watching something all your life, mm. and you're you've got a microphone in front of you, yeah, to try and inform people and to try and help people make their own minds up as well. Yeah. And I've seen something that they may not have seen, which is the important thing. I want to give. I want to tell that. Yeah, because I think in in some other sports, I think maybe racing's a little unique in that area because you are the main person who's observing everything. Okay, everybody can look at the form and look at the look at the odds, for example. But yeah. actually, you're you're there week in week out at, yeah. at Ascot, at Toaster, at you know any, any of the courses. And and you know it's it's actually it's a little different to perhaps a John Motson, a you know someone else who actually is going to call the action. But the player next to them has been in the team environment, mm. has been the one that tries to take a half a second to snatch at that half volley and score the goal and, yeah. and so they're going to give you the athlete's insight but yeah. but it's probably a bit more unique in, in you yeah. have to, to but, but it can do. apply to all the, all the sports I think added detail I think is important that we did the European Championships for five live swimming mm. at, at, in Glasgow just recently and I never forget a young British girl Cassie Wilde her first major championship you, you didn't need to have watched one swimming race in your life to realise that she was petrified. Mm. Her body language was... I, f- I so felt for her, you know? Yeah. She crept on the starting blocks. She was down in a start position before the other girls had got their <laughs> dressing gowns off, you know? Yeah. She couldn't wait for it to be over. Yeah. And you could tell yeah. straight away. And and uh, that is the added value I think you can can give an event by by being there and not being afraid to say what you think mm. they're going through. Yeah. You might be you're not going to be right all the time, are you? But but in that instance, she, if you had had an effects mic on her knees, <laughs> they'd have been knocking loud. You know, <laughs> you're a West Ham fan. Football yeah. must have appealed. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. Um, as a job, I mean, as a football commentator. Do you, know, do you want the honest answer? Never really. Really? Never. I mean, there are a lot of people that when you, know, when you think about commentating, their immediate thought is, oh, football. And, and you know, in my history, I've, I've encountered a lot of people that, that get in touch from university and say, you know, have you got any work experience or I want to become a football commentator? Yeah. And, and you go, there's a lot of them there. So I think you've got to have a lot of accolade or a lot of knowledge probably to get in there. And maybe if you're, if you're more fan than you are devotee, and maybe it isn't for you, but I just wondered, having got as far as you've got, were there any conversations or any doors were there, and you thought, do you know, what? I wouldn't mind to go. I oh, listen, now, Nick, I would love. Yeah, now I would love to. Right, I would love to now. I'd, and Five Live are great. They let me do reports on Saturday afternoons quite a lot, especially mm. when bad weather 
curtails the racing action and i love and i'll go to any match i don't mind yeah i'll go to peterborough i'll go i'll go i've been anywhere yeah anywhere i love to do football yeah but the, the fact is you know now gone 50 and and looking at our team at five live that and, and look, talk sports is exactly the same. They've got so many fantastic commentators. Mm. How am I? How am I going to get into that? And and that is where base knowledge would have you exposed in two seconds yeah. or lack of it. Yeah, you, you would think so. Yeah. I listen to some of those guys who can remember. Well, that was ex- he hit that the same way as he did against Crystal Palace <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. FA Cup three years ago. Yeah. You remember? And I'm thinking, I don't remember what happened yesterday. Like yeah. And, Three years ago, yeah. so I'm not, I, I I'm not one of those that. encyclopedic commentators either. That, uh, I mean, like my my four hours prep out of a rugby game is on the sheet in front of me. Yeah, and and if I'm lucky enough to be bought a beer afterwards by by some of them, then I, I probably can't remember who scored the second try <laughs> yeah, at that point. Yeah, but yeah. I guess we're all a little different. But but that said, I'd back myself to be to be descriptive and yeah to to nail big moments. I'd back myself to do that. I, yeah, I, there's nothing to, there's nothing within me that says. I couldn't do it, and I wouldn't like to do it, but but um, because I would like to do it, but it's just such a competitive field, and I'm lucky enough that I'm I'm you know I'm pretty busy, I'm pretty busy with the with the nags, yeah, you know, on their own, let, yeah. alone, let alone anything else. But busy being good somewhere else, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, what do you think is the key to being a good commentator? You touched there on the big moments. I think that's those are the areas where I think you know people people will judge you on maybe. Yeah, I, I I think consistent, being consistently accurate is 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 so so important. Mm-hmm. I w- I would hate if people were saying, yeah, well he's all right on the Gold Cup, but everybody loves the Gold Cup. Did you hear him at Did you hear him at Stratford last Tuesday? He just wasn't bothered, you know. Right. And I'd 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 hate to. You've got to tell me Nick, to give it up if that happens. <laughs> I, I I like to put as much effort into it. On the smaller days as the bigger days. Yeah, um, that's a great ethic to have. Ev- though. Well, you see, ev- I've always grown up thinking every race doesn't matter how lowly. Every horse has got an owner. Yeah, who might be listening to you. Every horse has got someone who's probably had a fiver on it as well. Who wants to know not just where their horse is, but how they're going. You know, yeah. do they look as though they might be threatening the lead? Are they coming with a late run? Are they dropping away? So, and the minute you start to say well those sort of details don't matter anymore and i'll just say what's in front and what's second and what's third i think you'd lose such a lot would you like to have commentated on on anything that you haven't had the chance to i mean we mentioned football anything out there that you'd love a love a stab at not really um i would say not really clock's ticking on my career (laughs) so i'm gonna i'm gonna change completely that answer (laughs) I, I would I would like to do football commentary. That would be fantastic. Okay. I'd love to do that. I would like to have, as a personal challenge, I'd like to have a go at boxing. Yeah. I'd love to have a bit of, do a bit of tennis. Yeah. And at a completely different pace, a little bit of golf would be fantastic as well. But you just you can just get greedy, can't you? Really. But <laughs> you you did. I ask. asked the question. You did ask. I asked you, the question. You did I ask. Could, a golf. I could hear you on. There's, yeah. Uh, there's a. There's. A, there's yeah. I could I could see that working. I, I mean, I would I would quite like boxing. I've always enjoyed mm, my boxing. Mike Mike Costello is 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 a class act, isn't he? Do you reckon? Yeah, I think he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no rubbish, rubbish. They should get you doing it. There we go. Is that better? We'll go, we'll go down that route. Um, what would be the two or three pieces of advice if if anybody is ever listening to uh, to any of our chat and uh, and decides that that commentary is for them? What do, what do you think are the key sort of technical or physical things they need to bear in mind? To get it right, I'd I'd say with, with horse racing commentary, you've 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 just there's no shortcuts. You've got to. I talked to earlier about my effectively given a complete year mm. to work on it day after day after day after day. You've just got to you've got to put the the hours into horse racing commentary. It's as much about rhythm and filling that minute and twenty seconds than it is being able to identify the horses. I see uh, we have a few youngsters come up and they say, yeah, I can do it. I've got a great memory and all the rest of it. And it's I, I'm staggered how many really fall short. Mm. And they, they fall short not necessarily because they won't ever be a commentator, but at that particular part of their stage of their life, maybe just turned 20 or something, they've just not done it enough. Yeah. So get yourself in front of a, a TV. Might sound practice. Everyone's got a recorder on their phone these days. Just do it. See mm. how you sound. Be critical of yourself, um, and just keep on practicing. It's it's 
it's not sadly it's not as easy now to get into as it was when when I started I fully acknowledge that but practice has got to be the number one thing in terms of your voice I'd, I I just don't know because because I fear that if you haven't quite got the voice for it you never will have mm-hmm do you think it takes a, a bit of a musical ear? I've had this conversation uh, on on the previous two chats I've had. Do you think Do you think there's an element of musicality that you need to be able to hear, almost to be self-critical, to hear the Difficult voice well? Difficult to know what what how you define musicality because because I don't think someone who's tone deaf musically would make a good commentator. Yeah, I'll put that out there. Yeah, I think you're probably right, and and is that. Is that to do with quavers and semi-quavers or just general rhythm and beat? Or I wonder if it's about being able to hear oneself. And I don't know whether that's a physiology thing yeah. or whether that's a, a, a mind and sound relationship. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. My, my, my thinking on it is that if, you can, if you're used to hearing yourself, it's the way you, you hear, you know, I don't know, one of your mates gives a speech and it's on a, it's on a video. And oh, I hate hearing myself. Yeah. I'm, you know, it's not that I'm the other end of the extreme. I love hearing myself, but I'll hear it and I'll go, yeah, that sounded all right. Yeah, no, I, I get exactly what you mean. That's fine. I don't mind that. And, yeah. and occasionally I'll hear a crack on a on a try and I go, ah, I could have done that better. Yeah. But I'm comfortable with my voice. Mm. And I and because uh, I hear it a lot and I was at drama school, I used to do singing and I hear it and I go, well, you're, you know, on a good day, you're a seven, seven and a half out of ten. You might make the chorus in the West End, but you're never going to get the lead role. Yeah. Because you have to know what you're good at and what you're not. And and I just think there's there's got to be a relationship, an inner relationship with the voice and and the ear. I can definitely I can definitely um, go with you on what you said there about um, the opening few fences of the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Four or five fences in, mm. first comment comes from guest pundit, say Andrew Thornton, Gold Cup winner, and I and I can I can, I can definitely. Uh, I can definitely relate to that feeling of you you saying to yourself mm. while someone else is speaking in that split second. Yeah, we've made a good start here. That sounded fine. That yeah. sounded good. Yeah, and and I'm and I'm into it. And and I think it feeds. You can you can use that to feed on as the commentary goes on. If you are if you know you've made a decent start, then yeah, bring bring the whole show on. Let's yeah let's, yeah let's well, really get going. That's interesting actually. Then because what I was talking earlier about where in a rugby game you would because it's as episodic as it is you would write the top so you know good afternoon everybody of course Saracens after their loss last week will be looking to bounce back this week against Tigers while you're waiting for the teams to come out and then you'll go through the team news which you yep. might have written as well now I find that once I've done that mm. if that's gone nice and smoothly Absolutely. with the pictures I'm off and running yeah so then by the time kickoff comes and it's and I'm now calling what I see yeah I'm in a good place yeah. whereas interesting for you it's actually you're already doing it, but you've just got to get the first relatively uneventful in most races, yeah. three or four fences out the way, and then you're off and running. Yeah, or it's even even more fun sometimes if the first few fences have been very eventful. Well, yeah, you know, and then you're back <laughs> to that old old story of having to just wind your neck in a little bit, as well, <laughs> yeah. realizing you've still got half a day left to go. Yeah, so. Yeah, the mechanics of it are fascinating to talk about. I don't very often sit down these days and think about how things are put together, why things work, why on one day you can have a really successful afternoon and, mm. and the next never really feel like you've got off the ground. Yeah. Do you uh, do you try, you know, I, I often think a lot of that is either routine or practice or yeah. repetition and mm. some people might get superstitious. Do you have any sort of match day routines? You mentioned earlier, actually, I'm now asking you three questions at the same time. Um, I'd been out the night before. Yeah. Do you... Can you be persuaded to the bar once or twice, and therefore, do you have to watch that? Very seldom the night before anything now. Yeah, yeah, very seldom. Because you'll have nothing left the next day. Well, it's just, it's just, you know, some days are difficult. Full stop. Why, why <laughs> would you, why would you make them any more difficult by by having a hangover? You know. Yeah. I mean, the the Frankel Guineas day. I I don't know what it was. It was a christening, or I don't know. It was some. It was something. He, he says reaching for some feeble excuse, but. <laughs> But they the were serving beer. They were serving beer. That's why. <laughs> yeah, it was, exactly. It was, it was tough. Exactly. <laughs> no, you can't. No, before big ones now, you just, you just can't. Yeah. You just can't do it. Well, I and can't. I get, and I guess over several days of a Cheltenham festival, yeah, it's, it's early to or maybe the Hall Games, for example. Yeah. Well, what's the point? Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm, 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 the, I'm the first one to join in for a, for a, a blowout at the end of or. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just don't, I just don't see why. Why jeopardize? You get sent to such lovely events. Yeah, don't really see why you should jeopardize it by 
even even if even if you're in absolutely good shape you can you never really be able to put a equate how what a deadening effect it can have on you perhaps mm. you know well you could have a hundred percent day and the next day you might be 98 percent because you went out the night before yeah. now that's still pretty good but actually yeah you know yourself you just you're just a bit your speed of thought's not as good yeah God damn! Why did I mention that? I would have, I, yeah. I would have backed myself to mention that, but I didn't mention. Why did I mention that? Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's just like none of it, none of it is earth-shattering. No, but but but, but your you sense know. of satisfaction when you get back in the car and you go, yeah, good day, John. Mm. Yeah, let's drive home and yeah, 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 absolutely. And and then as part of that question is, is there any sort of routine that you have that you that you always do? Will you will you turn up? You know, you'll turn up a certain number of hours before. Will you eat a certain time before? Will you anything like that? No, I'm, I'm completely unsuperstitious. Uh, I, I my my time keep, keeping in the very early days used to be terrible. Okay, I'd be a real last minute Charlie, but mm -hmm. now I would I'll, I would always get there. I'd rather be four hours late. Yeah. Sit around talking to nice people like you. Then. Four hours early, I think you mean. Sorry, four hours early. That's <laughs> what the that's racing exactly. might have finished. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's everybody gone? <laughs> it's very quiet here at Ascot this week. Um, yeah, I'd be I'd so I'd far rather be so miles early than late. Yeah, um, and we'll have to let you go in a minute so that uh, you're not late for the first race. No, exactly. But, uh, Eating. I mean, a, 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 comment, a colleague of mine, Mark Johnson, won't eat four hours before he starts commentating. Oh wow! And I just uh, I. I mean, I've just never. I've, I, I get the fact you don't want to add digestive biscuit as they're at the post. Yeah, I understand that, but <laughs> but um, no, no other routine, no other routines like that. I'm very dull and straightforward. I'm afraid. All right, um, not to uh, make it a macabre question, but you're being given one last sporting occasion to call. What would it be? Oh, and I say occasion because it doesn't need to be a two hours. It could be if it's a few. Could be a week. Yeah. Well, I. W I would have thought it'd be great to. I've been so lucky in my career, and I've enjoyed the Olympic Games I've done. It would be quite nice to finish it in Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'll take the Olympic Games. <laughs> I'm just going to work for it now. <laughs> Let's get Japan, America, and Paris in, in the bag. That puts me. I love this. We're actually deciding which year and which <laughs> yeah. games here from a theoretical question. Absolutely. Go on then. Go on then. Let's get there. Exactly. So <laughs> the early to mid sixties. So you, if you if if I'm lucky enough to do three more Olympic games, to finish at Olympic games might be really good fun. Yeah. So so I, I, so I'm getting on Twitter this afternoon and saying BBC's yeah. John Hunt has announced <laughs> his retirement <laughs> in 2000 and yeah exactly 30 something yeah exactly. Um, well, I, I, I will, I will, I will. There will be um, a disclaimer within that, mm -hmm. saying that if, if after Paris and after America and after Japan, if they announce somewhere really nice, yeah, the uh, the four years, we'll wheel after him that, out. We'll wheel yeah, him out. That's yeah. right. Okay. I mean, I'm interested in that answer because obviously you've got you've got a Cheltenham Gold Cup week and you've got you've yeah. got you know the the week of entry leading up to the national and, and all that sort of stuff. But the Olympics is that special. I think so. Yeah, it's it's you get so caught up in it. I mean, I did I, I've done London and Rio, and they were just fantastic events to be at. And within that, when Michael Phelps won his um, 200 meter individual medley, that was one of the best, best, best. Mm. I did well as a commentator, but it was yeah. one one of the great. It had everything in it, all the component parts. Phelps had Lockyer's great American rival. There was a a British swimmer in there, Dan Wallace, as well. There was uh, a Brazilian, Thiago Pereira, as well, on home soil. Mm. You see where I'm getting to here? You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, 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 this was set up to be a... The atmosphere was great beforehand, mm. you know? Um, and it was close up until Phelps at the final turn said, see ya, yeah. and and won his 21st gold or whatever it was. So yeah. that had, that for me, that that like three or four minutes of broadcasting had absolutely everything in it. I, I I love that, mm. and I don't listen back to much, but I'll listen back to that because because yeah. it d it did go well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Have you ever given yourself goosebumps? <laughs> uh, I, I've not given myself goose, goosebumps. Have you ever listened back and gone, "Oh, that's that's oh, that's no, excellent." No, I don't think so. <laughs> I've had I've had goosebumps during. Yeah. Definitely. Oh wow. Definitely. And and but is that and that's probably because of the sporting theatre that's in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That that race in Rio, yeah. a case in point. Yeah. We were standing up. I remember we used to drive the. We had a Japanese. Uh, crew behind us who obviously would sit down to do their commentaries all the time and we were like within the, f the first half an hour of business we were on our feet yeah. you know I say we Steve Parry and Karen Pickering who I do the swimming with and uh, they're such enthusiasts as well and 
you can just the physical feeling of being on your feet you're tapping each other as if to say this is this yeah, is yeah. special you know yeah. I, I can look I can see Steve Perry's face his jaws dropping because it's like so incredible and all these little yeah parts yeah just just ratchet the whole thing up as an event yeah so yeah Olympic Games sadly Phelps won't be there will he when I finish but someone else will be that's for sure that's Might the beauty of you, you never know yeah well, John, uh, there's a race that uh, is demanding your vocal tones on it shortly. Um, and I'd just like to thank you very, very much for your time. It's been fascinating. Pleasure. And uh, enjoy the next, well, you know, however many years you decide to give it. John Hunt, appreciate your time. Thank you ever so much. Nice speaking to you.